My name is uh, Grant Perryman, and I am proud to be Muscogee Creek, although I am not, by legal definitions, a tribal citizen. I am not able to be enrolled. And therefore, I've come up with a, a new title. I am a um, Muscogee Creek decitizen-sized, unenrolled, BA-denied Muscogee Creek Indian. The other point of sort of tumultuous contention is that politically there seems to be a great deal of controversy surrounding lineage and ancestry. So sadly there may be some kind of perceived advantage for some people and another kind of sort of legal disadvantage for others depending on on proof and how much you're able to determine you know ancestry from a particular tribe or band or group so Again, this is another, sadly, it seems to be and can be used as a, a deterrent or a crutch or another tool to sort of move people around to positions where they seem most vulnerable. I think that seems sadly to be the ultimate goal because in other cultures where people even have the smallest amount of a particular type of ancestry or lineage that you can either tell by general perception or documentation it's it can be it can be accepted uh, you know toward an advantage or toward a disadvantage but here in North America it it seems to be always some kind of point of contention which is, is remains sadly unfortunate it's, I have a, such a deep um, opinion of this. I'm so glad that you asked me to be a part of this. Uh, the only the only picture I've ever had of my great grandfather was a picture of him in my father's mantle in full headdress, right? So we've always known that our people, my daddy's from Alabama, from Madison, Alabama, which is a little small town next to Huntsville. And, and um, we've always known that it was basically Africans mixing with Native people that made up the Moore family down south. And I guess that was for me, that was enough. Uh, I knew if I, you know, if you, if you were this amount of native blood, you could go to school for free and you could do all these other things. But I think it's this, when you're an African American person in this country, we have such a peculiar um, history and, a, and it's such a, a, a disconnect from our ancestry in a way that we understand that we can't trace where we're from. So you grow up just understanding that you may never know where all your family came from. So, you know, my folks that came from West Africa, or my, I'm a Moor, so my folks that came from Spain and conquered Europe, you know, so my Moor, my Moorish background and, and that lineage. And um, one day I'd, I'd, I'd like to, and I think I'm, I'm tracing my father's roots now, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to dig in deeper. Like I talk to my aunties down there and they'll tell me, you know, our tri we can trace our tribe to uh, uh, a reservation in Georgia. We're in Georgia, we're in Alabama, we're in Mississippi. And so I need to do more research, but for me, it wasn't about trying to prove it to anybody. Like I understood that it was a part of my ancestors and it's part of my ancestry. I look at my grandmother's face and it's right there. I went into a, a gallery in Denver, Colorado once and saw, it was actually a picture of, um, it wasn't a Cherokee Indian man. It might've been, uh, what was it, maybe Dakota. It was another tribe completely. He looks exactly like my father. Like exactly, I cried in the damn gallery. You know, same cheekbones, same eyes, same, everything you know but um it's unfortunate because of the african-american experience here like we're still disconnected from our african ancestors let alone the fact that our people were already here 
um, in my mother's um, side of the family is all they are European, but with my father's side, we, I can't trace any white Americans in my family. So all our family is, if they got yellow or light brown, it's because of na a native mix with, a, with the African mix. And so, so it's been deep, because I think more than even my brothers and sisters, I've taken on the spirit of my native ancestors more than they have, or, or even care to take the time to tap into. But it's, it's a part of my DNA. And I feel very spiritually connected to my native brothers and sisters and have a lot of native friends um, who are more well versed, but they can trace it when their mother or your father is a native, you know, naturally, that it's easier. But if it's a grandfather or a great grandfather, I mean, some of us can't trace that far back. To be honest, you get to the great grandfather and the next person, then there's no paperwork on like we don't exist. And so I don't understand. And I know that recently Cherokee Nation came out and like really kind of like dissed the idea of the black native that really hurt a lot of us because you know a lot of us were upholding the culture you know we're helping you to uphold the culture and and I and it's I really wish that dialogue would open up between you know full-blooded natives who have paperwork or whatever you know because I've seen some folks that look like they're damn near European saying they were Native American and had the paperwork to go with it and I'm looking at them like really <laughs> okay well what am I if you're native you know and so I would love that conversation to open up between the black community the African-American community who to me, in my opinion, if you trace your roots, because I did my DNA, my, my dad has passed, so I, did, I have done my DNA um, swab test with my brother, but I couldn't do it through my mother's, my, my mother's not African American, so I didn't, couldn't do it through her line. So through my father's line, our people were Portugal and Spain and, and here in the Americas, and I was like, I wasn't surprised by that. You know, and, and I think the idea of, so I, I understand that this is my country in a real way, not because, you know, what, the, thing, the things that America represent bother me the way that America, they're from the political uh, standpoint, from how they treat women and the poor. And I think uh, what keeps me patriotic is that I have native blood. So that's what keeps me saying, well, you know, this was my land, so it's mine. So I have to be here to make something better with this place because my ancestors were here before everybody else's. And so it, that's the patriarch, you know what I mean? It's from the native side of things. And if that wasn't there, I don't think I would feel that way. Okay. I'm not on the tribal role, however my grandmother was, and we're still applying for it. The way I feel about tribal roles is that I, I, I like them in the sense that they do unify people who are from vast areas and who have some tribal, tribal affiliation together, and there's a sense of oneness. But at the same time, I feel that's also very um, like stigmatizing in a way, because like you have to, you have to backtrack and get all this information about your family history and who you are in relation to them in order to prove who, that you are Indian enough. Because in, like, in, any, in any other racial group, you have to go through this whole, this, whole, this whole thing of trying to prove that you belong to that group or typically it's accepted on face value. And with tribal world, it's like, oh, you have to prove that you're this. Because even though you've been passing on this language, this culture, that's not who you are until we have proof. So we are, we are not enrolled, nor are we enrollable. Um, my family did not make the Trail of Tears. We are not on the Dawes Row in any way, shape, or form. And um, I suppose that there is some value and use to having that as a way of determining who is and is not um, legitimately a, a full-blooded or partially-blooded Cherokee person. But I also feel that it, the existence of the role does not necessarily honor the fact that not everyone made the Trail of Tears and that not everyone who feels an affinity for Native culture, for Cherokee culture, who has blood in them can be included because of what I consider a superficial imposition of something from the majority culture that is designed to categorize people.